We got a heat wave on our hands. Crows are angry. Hey, how's everyone doing? So, um, I got thinking about something. I was, uh, I was on Facebook there and, um, I often, you know, post a picture of pretty much every car I get, um, you know, junk car I pick up, just kind of a weird, stupid thing I always do, but, um, I noticed, uh, when I was posting these pictures, there was, uh, people I know from town and stuff and, you know, back home, but they were, uh, they were commenting and, I don't know, they kind of got the feeling that maybe the picture was of the car when I was getting it, like, and that I was keeping it, and I had this, you know, big yard that they were staying in, I, I don't know, but it just kind of seemed like that's the way the comments were going, and, uh, you know, it dawned on me that, you know, not everyone knows exactly what's going on no one knows like the way I do things but um when I'm posting those pictures that's actually a picture of of that thing leaving that I'm on my way to the yard I'm going to cash it in because you know I turn and burn I've been using that a lot lately that term to people to explain turn and burn I'm not picking up these cars and buying these cars to to save up of course they're not old you know rare square bodies that i'm just holding on to they're junk cars i mean i get it i don't have it no no more than a couple days depending uh sometimes even quicker because i buy that and my money gets invested into that and then i turn it over and make a profit i, I don't want to sit on stuff you know i i it's just not something I want to get into, especially in the dead of winter. And uh, that brings me to, it's 2023. Uh, just got into February. You know, it's pretty much dead of winter up here, but a little light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. We're starting to, uh, you know, the sun's coming out, a little bit of melting going on today. Um, it was, whew, man, it was cold there for a few days couldn't even stand outside for more than 30 seconds it was uh wind chill like minus 20 something um got down me i think it got down to like minus 15 at night um pretty crazy so uh i don't know i got thinking you know maybe it's time to just do a a full inventory of uh of everything that i got you know all my vehicles because sometimes it's uh easy to lose track and uh You know, there's uh, some comments, you know, some of you leave comments, say, you know, where's the Suburban? Where's the farm truck? Where's this? Where's that? Uh, things got switched around a little bit this winter as far as where I parked them. And, uh, you know, having all these vehicles and, uh, you know, not a very huge piece of property, it's tough to, uh, there's no way to keep them all on the road in the winter. And, uh she's dropping and uh it's just not it doesn't make any sense you know to uh to drive all of them in the winter either so uh i figure take a walk around and uh show you a full inventory and uh hope you enjoy it as you can see i deal with uh fairly i mean decently wide driveway but when you pack it full of stuff and then you got nowhere to put the snow um it gets kind of tough in the winter time but so we'll start with the 1980 dually cheyenne c30 camper special big block uh original 454 turbo 400 got the dump bed insert in the back um, so 
I had parked this in the winter in uh first couple of years being up here, but um, now that I got the uh, dump bed in there, I sort of keep this on the road and accessible if I can, because, you know, you never know when I'm going to get a job like a, you know, a, a big clean out or a big load of something, whatever kind of junk somebody wants to move, get rid of, um, got to be available to do that. Um, I don't, this is, well, I don't use it too much, and, uh, the main reason is, it's a big block, two-wheel drive, and, uh, if you know, you know, because that's, doesn't go well in the snow, um, and it's only, it's not pausy either, so, uh, tends to get stuck a lot, and, uh, I have a weekly trash route that I do on Mondays, and, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to use the dump bed. I just throw the bags in, go there, back up to the hopper, and uh, push the button. Don't have to touch them twice. But uh, during the winter, I don't really use it because when I have to uh, back into people's driveway and stuff like that, I end up getting stuck. So... Not much to report. Uh, what does it currently need? Got a power steering leak. Uh, you know, a few little things like that, but um, still fairly solid. Underneath, really solid. Uh, it's starting to, you know, a little bit on the rockers, the floors, but it's pretty much always been like that. So, ah, uh, current running condition is uh, tap key. Because, you know, it's not it's not a Ford where, you know, you, you can't, like, start it and it doesn't run. And you got to, like, you know, pop the hood and, you know, spray ether and rebuild the whole engine to get it to even go. So, it's a Chevrolet. And, uh, on the road, inspected, registered, insured, and, uh... That's about it. Ready to go whenever I need it. Next would be the uh, 2010 Chevy Silverado. And, uh, I mean, come on. Yeah, what can you say? 5.3, six-speed automatic, four-wheel drive. Uh, no doubt it's the main gun now uh, in the winter. You know, it's got the hydraulic lift gate, and uh, this is what I've been using with all the snow and ice. Throw the bags in, throw them out, whatever else they got to get rid of. Lift gate comes in handy. Um, I'm doing. Uh, snowmobile recoveries and uh really works out good not to mention it'll tow anything you throw at it ah current running condition is uh a1 i got some things springtime comes uh you know i've been uh, saving up some parts i got you know, cross members a little soft under there. I got some, uh, some some new shocks and stuff. Some stuff to beef up the rear end. Uh, I got some exhaust parts. And, uh... That's about it. Keep the oil changed. Uh, it's nice. Rockers are starting to show it. You know, starting to peek through. But this is what happens up here. Stuff on the road just eat some but uh, probably near future uh, do some brakes on it check them out uh, probably need some pads and stuff you know about now get some miles put on it 
um, nice heat, AC, whatever you need. And uh, that's that. And sitting right sort of in the way, but not really, is the old RV, the old Jambo Rally. 1986 Chevy G30 uh, 5.7 350 turbo 400 can't go wrong um, so in previous winters I did have it sitting out back uh, it just barely fit through here don't ask me uh, it was a uh, it was a struggle, but I could get it through there and get it to the backyard, um, you know, with a couple of minor scrapes and bruises on some stuff. But uh, last winter, parked it at a friend's in town, only a couple minutes away, and uh, turns out a lot of mice over there. I mean, I got mice here too, but... Pretty much, if you if you live up here, you you know you're gonna have mice. It's just all there is to it. But uh, big big mouse problem happened. Not really damaged anything, but just sort of made a mess uh, in the drawers. And you know, of course, it's all cleaned out. I don't leave anything in it. But um, with it, you know, with it being over there, I wasn't able to. I mean, I could, but I didn't really check up on it, you know, a lot and go in and, you know, run the water pump and, you know, push the antifreeze through the pipes. And, um, you know, I didn't really get to do that stuff uh, being over there. So uh, it got filled with mice and, you know, it took a lot of cleaning and stuff, but we got it back and... Um, decided this winter we're going to park it right here uh kind of kind of cool uh the wife likes it you know bumps right up to the deck and uh it's kind of cool like a little added added space you know if you want to do something inside mess around whatever uh it's right there so Current running condition, haven't started it this winter at all, but uh, it's got an Edelbrock on it. You know, it's, it's it's all we run. It's all we run. You can't go wrong. Got to have Eddie on there. Um, things I'd like to do to it is to get rid of the leaky exhaust manifolds, put some headers on it. Um... You know, maybe an intake because it's it's got all that emissions crap on it. Being an '86, it's got a lot of vacuum lines, a lot of it's got two smog pumps. Um, so, you know, some stuff like that. Uh, it's showing its age. You know, we went up the Golden Road in it, and it was so bumpy it kind of separated in some spots. But you throw a little more silicone on there, and. Uh, you know, got a lot of sentimental value to us, so it sticks around. Uh, it's got a, you can, you know, go back and, you know, any of these vehicles that I talk about, there's, there's plenty of videos on them telling more in-depth history and everything, but there's a, some broken dream stories about this with the transmission. Uh, I swapped it out three times, but it currently has Turbo 400 out of a, two-wheel drive dump truck uh probably in the late 70s and it works good uh i can't believe i would complain about this but it sort of has like a shift kit in it or something and it takes a long time to shift kind of bangs into gears so kind of funny but a little inconvenient in the same way uh when it shifts in a second, some pots and pans tend to come out of the cabinets. But other than that, she's sitting right there and uh, there's got enough room. 
keep the dually there. Of course, I can't get it out until I move that, but I usually keep the trailer hooked up. Lately, it's been a lot. And when it snows, I can uh, pull it ahead with the four-wheel drive and get it out of the way and snow blow. And, you know, it sort of, sort of works out that way. So there you go. 2002 Cadillac Escalade that was zero dollars got this for free uh, like I said videos on it go check them out search for them they're there um, 6.0 LS all-wheel drive uh, pretty much the the wife's main gun for the winter and uh, also, I can't seem to stay out of it. Whenever I need to go somewhere, I just jump right in it. So nice. Um, current running condition. Perfect. Uh, just yesterday, had new windshield put in. Uh, had a crack up there. So insurance took care of that. Um... Not much really to report as far as uh, running wise. Pretty much jump in, go wherever you want. Uh, things we talked about doing, possibly a different exhaust, maybe making it loud, not sure. Uh, fix the, uh, did fix the rockers during the summer. That's about it. Maybe some different wheels in the future, but there you go. Escalade. And uh, if I ever needed to, she definitely tows. Haven't towed anything with it yet. There you go. You can uh, pretty much see that during the winter. It turns from, I think I got seven vehicles here all together. Uh, these two, the black truck and the Escalade, are the two main guns for winter time. And of course, the newly acquired, didn't even expect it, 1995 Chevy 1500. 350 TBI and uh, this was pick up my junk car and get rid of it uh, call I got and it was right before the first time it snowed uh, pretty unbelievable did a couple things to it and uh, she runs she drives she plows Nice and comfortable inside, good heat, wipers work, it's got LED backup lights, I mean, I didn't even put those on, so you can see that there's some wood there, the frame started to split like they do right in the middle of uh, the uh, leaf spring hanger, so they put that wood in there to uh, to sort of shim it and keep it from uh, folding in half, but it does not affect the way it runs, drives, and plows. Um, so can be easily fixed, and the bed is pretty much junk on it. It's all rotted inside. It's got holes and everything, and um, you know the tailgate really doesn't work. It's just pretty rotted, but plans probably um, I thought about ripping the bed off in the summer and getting rid of that fixing the frame well that's off maybe putting a flatbed on it um, you know it actually could be driven on the road 
there's really not much stopping it other than you know really fixing that frame which isn't really stopping it either but the downfall is there's no title they lost the title the guy doesn't even you know didn't want to even bother with it so uh being a 95 that is the cutoff year 95 vehicles and newer in maine absolutely need a title to register so couldn't really register it if i wanted to but had some thoughts of you know possibly picking up another truck that had a title swapping some stuff over you know what i mean and uh i don't know current condition is turnkey and plow works everything works if it snows um does what i need it to and it makes piles of snow and gets it out of your way and up here the uh, town trucks they just they wing it in i mean it, it gets gets tall out here in front and no i don't care how big of a snowblower you got but uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna move it especially when it's wet and heavy so definitely uh definitely comes in handy very uh very lucky to have it so 200 bucks and uh that's that see what the future holds not really sure uh, we'll see and of course 1992 Buick Roadmaster Estate 350 TBI uh, so we usually would uh, park this in the winter and up here you can just you know whatever you don't drive in the winter you could take the liability insurance off so it's pretty cheap and it stays stays on the road you know and uh if a tree falls on or something like that you know it's uh you're still insured but uh anyway we usually park it uh it's pretty clean underneath no rust on the body at all no rust underneath um but during the summer, I got some stuff uh, fixed on it. Uh, the windows all working and all go up and down nice. All the clips replaced and little things like that. And uh, got the heat working. When I got it, it had no thermostat, had no blower motor. Um, nothing was going on. So um, got a blower motor for it got a resistor did some work uh, got that all done and um, got the heat working so we said well you know let's uh, instead of leaving something else because we usually leave one more you know like the farm truck or you know a Suburban or something um, actually I haven't driven the Suburban up here in, in Maine in the winter but um, usually leave something else just so you got like, you know, you can hop in, have a little fun with something else, but, uh, decided to leave this one on the road, um, because of, you know, getting all that stuff working. Um, but then So it snows for the first time, and I say, well, I'm going to go out and uh, have some fun in the wagon, maybe drift around a little bit, you know, uh, for the hell of it. And uh, come to find out, the brakes are horrible. Uh, there was no, no brakes going to the rear at all, only front. So as soon as you hit the brake on the snow or ice you just plowed forward it was it, it just locked up it was like kind of like impossible to drive it so it was it was a big letdown and uh kind of just parked it in the snowbank and it got covered in snow and, and then um i made a video where i got it unstuck one day and i brought it in the garage and uh, I started looking, I wanted to look at these rear brakes, see what was going on. You know, it was kind of like discouraging. So um, when we got it, it had a blown brake line in the rear. 
Uh, so I just, you know, it was summertime. I, I quickly threw a line in it and uh, bled them real quick. And uh, we were on our way. It had a brake pedal and, and everything was fine in the, in the nice weather. But uh, I jacked it up and spun the wheels and it was absolutely not slowing down the rears at all. So uh, it turns out it was massively airbound going to the back and the rear drums were way out of adjustment. So by adjusting those and bleeding the shit out of the brakes, it now has a rock hard pedal and it stops on a dime. I mean, uh, you can drive it and uh, not worry about sliding and stuff like that. So uh, it's a really nice ride, smooth, comfortable, and uh, heat works, everything. So, after Christmas, after New Year's, took the tree out, plopped it on top, makes people ask questions, and makes people laugh. So, uh, take a ride, get a coffee, hang the dog out the side, and uh, make people turn their heads, because you don't see uh, wagons like this, and you definitely don't see wagons in this condition way up here. So, uh current condition current running condition is turn key do whatever you want and uh probably future plans i don't really know there's not much um doesn't really need anything maybe uh maybe some tires in the near future but other than that it's uh registered insured and don't need inspection because we got antique plates on it so and it would pass anyway but had so many vehicles on the road just figured get antiques for one and uh there you go 92 roadmaster so now we're on the right side of the house and uh last year we had the wagon and the suburban in the backyard and it just sort of created this, uh, once everything started thawing out it, uh, in the spring, it created this pool of just endless water. And uh, it was a nightmare to uh, get the vehicles out. And it just made a complete mess. Um, gave no room for the dogs to come outside and run around, enjoy take a dump you know whatever so um this you know and last winter the uh farm truck was over here on the side where it is now so that brings us to the last two vehicles and uh here we got 1978 Suburban GMC from Canada likes the cold ah uh, yeah so decided you know I got some more room over here and uh, plus I plow this guy's driveway so I'm able to push the snow right up um, so there's not big piles of snow that have to melt before you can get them out in the spring So, I knew that there would be some stuff coming off the roof and uh, going on it. But, I mean, you know, it's been outside its whole life. Ain't going to hurt it. It's been covering snow plenty of times. Um, 78 GMC Suburban 350 original. Turbo 350 original. Uh, it's turnkey. Um, gonna have to do some cold starts. I mean, uh, usually I start them up, you know, once a month in the winter, but have not touched, have not even opened the door on this, uh, since October. 
and uh, we're into February now, so uh, it did have a really nice battery in it, always cranked over fast. Um, not much to say, I mean, you know the Suburban, can't get rid of that, had it forever, uh, originally paid $800 for it, two-wheel drive, it is pretty good in the snow, it used to be my daily driver, um, you know, to work every day in the winter, this is what I drove, the heat was never that great, never got warm inside, never really addressed that, um, did some rust repair on it. It's got aftermarket fenders, hood, uh, a couple of rear quarter patches. Uh, it needs some more, but it's not terrible. Pretty solid. Uh, you know, doesn't need much mechanically. It's got newer headers, uh, newer duals on it, glass packs. Oh, you know, it's got the Edelbrock. Uh, Pretty much all to say, you know, all to say about that. Uh, hopefully, when that iceberg comes off, it doesn't damage it. But I'm hoping with the I left the snow on it, so that maybe it kind of cushions it. And uh, we'll see. Not much I can do about it now because I'm definitely not moving it. No way. So there's the Suburban. You were wondering, where is it? It's always right there. It's always around. Never. Ever. Well, shouldn't say never because everything's got its number, but it would have to be a pretty big number to get that from me. And I guess I should say last but not least, that's what they say, 1978. Chevy Cheyenne C10. It's got a 350. You know about it. Crate motor. GM performance. Clackety cam in it. Edelbrock. Uh, you know, basically, it's a good old truck. But it's, uh, it's sheet metal. It's body. Not so good. Mechanically, it's pretty good. Uh, current condition, don't know. Like the Suburban, haven't touched it, haven't started it. I have driven it in past winters. Uh, it's not terrible in the snow. It is two-wheel drive. Um, but heat works pretty good in it, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's just... Uh, take a corner too hard the cab will lift off the frame so you know not too solid in that um, it's the bed is pretty hurting the uh, rear supports on the bed you know the cross bracing whatever you want to call it it's uh, it's rotted bad and uh, can't tell the way it's sitting now but on the other side, it sort of sits crooked because that it's just uh, the bed has just fallen down and it's just kind of, you know, laying down on the frame. But surprisingly, the frame itself is uh, <clears throat> very solid. And, uh, you know, actually, you know, the whole chassis, I mean, you know, everything underneath is pretty good on this truck. Um, and that engine is still fresh definitely not a lot of miles on it uh, so don't know what the future holds I mean it's sort of just a it's got character people like it it's hauled a lot of scrap it's even towed the trailer um, I don't know Definitely uh, would like a better bed for it. I don't want to do like a flatbed thing or anything on it. Uh, but these days, all the square body stuff's way out of sight as far as uh, 
far as money goes so there's no way to no way to buy anything but uh currently you could start it you could go wherever you needed to but don't just don't let it be at night because it's got some wiring issues uh the wiring's a mess don't get me wrong it's under the dash is just crazy people before me uh did a number on it um i had to do some work to uh get everything everything working and stuff when i got it but um the last two years it's had no running lights uh headlights work but none of the running lights work brake lights do work when the fuse doesn't blow so that's pretty much where i'm at i need i need help really with that i, I can't seem to uh figure out it's got to be a broken wire or a short somewhere but other than that there you go 1978 broken dreams farm truck still pretty cold out there when you're standing in the snow so uh did you make it through did you did you make it through the whole video you still i know you'd still be watching i knew it the whole time i knew it so there you go full vehicle inventory february 2023 seven vehicles in total and um uh, that's it. That's all of them out there. There's nothing. There's nothing anywhere else. Just the ones that are waiting for me to buy and take to the crusher. But um, hopefully, you know, it was fun. It clears things up, shows you full inventory. And uh, basically, you can see that I just don't really have the room. Um, I'd like what I'm what I'm wanting to do. I'm hoping in the future up here is to find uh, um, a piece of property like an old camp lot or something, you know, with a rundown shack or whatever it might be. Uh, maybe on the outskirts of town where I could possibly, you know, park a few vehicles and stuff and uh, maybe some stuff that I'm picking up that I can part out. Um, not like a junkyard or anything, but just a drop spot maybe. Um, you know, things like that, you know, like that red uh, red GMC, you know, uh, I had the 4.8, 150,000 miles on that drivetrain. Um, I mean, kind of stupid, but, you know, you can see that I'm not going to, th there's no way I'm getting into uh, pulling something apart here. Um, don't really want to uh, deal with the mess and... Uh, the stuff, you know, the hassle of juggling around vehicles and, um, and I really just don't want my money held up in these winter, uh, winter days either. So, uh, heating's expensive, bills or electricity is through the roof, literally. Um, so, you know, as it is, I had to, uh, make that extra spot out front where I usually push all the snow because it's uh, there's nowhere else to really push it. Um, well, actually, not push it, but even you know, um, last winter I didn't have the Raider, um, the little Raider plow. Uh, so, you know, like everyone else, most people, I just had a snowblower, and uh, I would do as much as I could with the snowblower, kind of blow it all to that front, and. Uh, one of my friends from town with a plow on their truck, they'd come by at some point, whether they were driving by in the morning or at night, and they would just swoop that front um, into that those front spots there. And uh, that's really, you know, it worked out well. Um, but I wasn't expecting to get a plow truck uh, when I got that 95 blue truck. So um, made an extra spot, got the wagon out there. It makes things tight you know, in the driveway, but what are you going to do? Um, it's worth it to have a running and driving plow truck. Uh, and plus I got a couple of neighbors too, that, 
Um, I do their driveway, you know. A couple pay, a couple don't, but um, nice to be able to help out, you know, the people that that actually give a shit and that appreciate it. So anyway, that's enough. You've you're still here. I knew you would be. I knew you'd still be watching. So seven vehicles in the fleet and uh springs on the way so that we can drive all of them and have room to park all of them kind of I'm always watching. See you on the streets.